Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another review video. If you like this content and want to see more, please hit the notification bell and subscribe so that you won't miss a single instant when a video is posted. This video is about a science fiction book that's called The Crucible of Empire by Eric Flint and K.D. Wentworth and it was published in March of 2010 and it is a sequel to the science fiction novel that was published in 2003 called The Course of Empire. And it happens about two years after the events of that novel. So let's get right into it. By the way, I did a video on The Course of Empire, the first in the series, and it should be off to the side here somewhere. So you can check that out. And then when you're finished, come back and check this one out. The story begins with Gabe Tully up in the Rocky Mountains with some resistance fighters, the last of the resistance fighters, trying to convince them to come down and join the Jiao and the rest of the humans in the fight against the Eckhart. He gets a call from General Ed Kralik, who tells him that Ail, who is now governor, wants him to come back to Pascagoula as soon as possible, that something major has come up. At the meeting in Pascagoula, there were Governor Ail, Yaut, there were General Ed Kralik and his wife Caitlin, there is Tully and Rafi Aguilera. Also showing up at the meeting is Preceptor Rans, Rock, and three other Jiao. The meeting begins when Il introduces himself to the two new Jiao that the Preceptor brought with him. He introduces himself as Il Krenu Avatara. Terra means Earth. The two new Jiao are surprised when he introduces himself. Their names are Malu Krenu Avakrant and Kalm Krenu Avakrant. The meeting begins with the telling of a battle that happened against the Eckhart in the nebula NGC 7293, better known as the Helix Nebula. In the battle, two of the Jiao Krant ships were destroyed and the third was heavily damaged and half of its crew died. They only survived with the help of an unknown species who helped them destroy the Eckhart ships and then ran away. Preceptor Rans tells them that the brand new ship that they're building on Earth, which is bigger than any other Jiao ship ever built, will be sent to the Helix Nebula to, to look around. And it's going to be crewed by Jiao and humans. And he's also sending Caitlin and Tully along with them because their skills will be needed. But he does not tell what they're looking for. The only person he tells is Roth, who he tells later after the meeting. So no one except Roth knows that the reason they're going is to try and make contact with the new alien species that they believe are out there and that the preceptor thinks that the species that's out there is the Leix, a species that the Jiao had destroyed long ago when they were slaves for the Eckhart. And the Leix is also the species that put the idea into the Jiao head that the Jiao could one day be free of the Eckhart, although the Jiao did not act on that idea until way after the Leix were destroyed. The final person at that meeting was Terra Captain Dannett, who was going to be the captain of that new ship, which will be called the Lexington. North met Malu, Jalta, and Kalm, and they met Rafi, and they went to examine the new ship. The preceptor had decided that the Krant survivors of the battle in the nebula would be going back to the nebula on board the Lexington because they may be of help. Kalm, who was one of the survivors on the Kran Jiao ship, losing all of her fellow crew members seemed to have a bad effect on her. 
and she seems ready to fight any human she meets and her superior Malu is afraid that she will shame Krant in front of the other Jao. So while Rafi takes the Krant survivors on a tour through the new ship, Caitlin goes to see the preceptor in the hopes of getting out of him what they're going to be doing in the nebula. It doesn't work. Tully, who was made commander of Baker Company, which is a unit of ground troops, were told by Ail that they would be going on the Lexington when it leaves. The Lexington was huge. It held 6,000 soldiers, 1,000 crew. Current Captain Malou was beginning to see this as an opportunity for his low status Koshan Krant to gain much needed association and status. When Rafi got them to the bridge and they were exploring the bridge, Callum saw how he was standing and assumed he was insulting them and charged him. And although his broken ribs was not yet healed, Malu knocked her down and talked to her until she was calm. He then passed out from the pain. Malu was taken to med lab and the preceptor, finding out about it, calls Worth and tells Worth to find a way to get the current to behave. And Worth promptly gets Tully and dumps the problem on Tully. Finally, with everything on board and ready, Terra Captain Dunnett gave the order and the Lexington took off. Part 2 is called the Lyic and it takes place in the nebula NGC 7293 or the Helix Nebula. On a planet called Valeron in that nebula was where the Lyx went to hide from the Eckhart. They've been hiding on this planet for over a thousand years and now it seems that the Eckhart has finally tracked them down. Their satellites gave warning the two Eckhart ships had entered the nebula, so they launched their ships and fought a battle with the Eckhart. They were able to destroy one of the two ships. The other one ran away, but before it could escape the nebula, two smaller ships came into the nebula and fought that Eckhart ship. And one of the two smaller ships were destroyed, but the Eckhart ship was also destroyed and the remaining ship went away without making contact it was badly damaged now jihan of the star sifters alien after doing some research believes that the ship that got away the damaged ship was a jow ship of course her elders in the star sifters alien does not agree with her with the leix an alien is similar to a guild and every occupation no matter how small has its own alien the leix in a very bad way they are on a metal poor planet and they don't have the resources to rebuild the two ships that they just lost fighting the egg hut so jihan went to the han the han is a gathering of all the elders of the alien of the leix she broke tradition and rules by going and in the end the hand decided that they will do two things one they will get the remaining ships they have ready to take as much survivors as they can to hide in on a different planet although the remaining ships can only take about a couple hundred people and two they allow Jihan to create a new alien called Jiao Lo, just in case she's right. When Jihan got back to the Star Sifter's house, she was allowed to search the records for any reference of the Jiao. She spent her time searching and copying all the records she could find. Then they suggested to her that she go to the Eckhart Law and search their records. And that's what she did. When she got to the Eckhart Law, the elders there assigned a young Leix of their Elan to her new Elan to help her in her task. Kajin was very reluctant 
and was forced into the new Elan against his will. While searching the Eckhart Law records, she came across a record of a meeting between the Zhao and the Leix that happened 2,240 years ago. That meeting happened on the last planet that the Eck had had before they fled to Valeran. The meeting was between Subcommandant Breen and a hundred Zhao and an elder of the Leix. And the elder was trying her best to convince the Zhao that they can one day be free of the Eckhart and be their own people. But she failed and was killed right on the spot by Subcommandant Breen. And although the meeting failed, that was when the idea for the Zhao to be free of the Eckhart was planted. When Jihana Kajin left for the night, they saw waiting for them a large group of the unassigned. The unassigned are like being unemployed and homeless for the leaks. They were there hoping that she would choose from among them to be new members of her new alien. She chose from among them a young one called Paya. They found an empty alien house that they made their own so Jihan and her small group studied the Jiao because she was sure they are the ones that the Lihiks would end up fighting. And though she was basically alone in her belief, the other Lihik helped as much as they can because there was an outside chance that she was right. Part 3 is called The Voyage. The Lexington is on its way to the frame point to make its jump to the Helix Nebula. While Caitlin is trying to figure out the real reason for the mission, Tali has been assigned the Quant survivors and they have been training with his Baker company on shooting the Lexington's big guns. Carlton has come up with a way to have the big guns load and shoot even faster, which is surprising because the Zhao is not known for their creative capabilities. Killing figured out that the mission is a first contact mission to meet the Lick. She spoke to Rob and he confirmed it and gave her access to the bond records so that she could prepare since it would be her job to be the diplomat. Tully gave gun six to Callan so that she can do her improvements and when she was finished the gun improved its efficiency by 14% so he is going to recommend that the improvements be applied to all of the Lexington guns when they get back to earth. The Lexington reached the frame point and jumped. The jump was successful. It emerged in the photosphere of the star in the nebula and as they emerged from the star ahead of them was five Eckhart ships. Part 4 is called a battle on the Eckhart capital ship a newly mated pair achieve mental synchronicity and then dominance on the ship by killing the former dominant pair. Then they notice the Lexington coming out of the photosphere of the star. Meanwhile on Valoran, Harata of the Star Waters alien came to visit Jihan and she requested of her to help them pilot their ship which they were going to go into orbit and monitor the Eckhart ships that had just been noticed in the system. Once in orbit, Jihan and Harata and Leland watched as the Eckhart ships began closing in on their planet and just then a much larger ship came out of the sun and the Eckhart ships turned around and headed towards it and the battle began. The Lexington destroyed the first Eckhart ship with their big guns. Then as the second got closer they rammed it and destroyed it. The gun turret that Tully was in was damaged when the Lexington rammed the Eckhart ship and they barely escaped out of the gun turret before 
It was jettisoned. The Lexington dipped back into the photosphere of the sun and came out with a ball of plasma surrounding it. He got close to the other three Eckhart ships and then severely damaged one ship that fell into a low orbit around the sun without power. The second ship it was able to destroy and the third ship it rammed. It, it caused the ship to spin out of control and then the ship broke up. The battle was over. With the battle over, Terra Captain Danette gave Tully orders to grab his Baker company and go to the remaining Eckhart ship that was in low orbit around the sun since it seems to be the least damaged one and he was to try to capture any Eckhart he could for interrogation. She then began destroying any large piece of the Eckhart ships that remained because some of them were on automatic and shooting off lasers. Meanwhile, Jian watched the battle from the tiny Leix ship and when the battle was over, they were too close to one of the debris from the Eckhart ship and it shot off a laser at them, damaging them and killing most of the crew except for Jihan, Harata and Lian. With the ship losing power and without communications, Jihan decided that the best thing to do was to try to get to the Eckhart ship where they may be able to steal something so they can get back to their planet. Part 5 is called The Wreck. Tully and Baker Company headed for the wreck. Included with them was Malu and Calm. Along the way, the human members of Baker Company was regaling Calm with fairy tales. About the same time, Jihan and her two survivors also headed for the wreck. They got there a little ahead and anchored their ship onto the Eckhart ship. When Jihan saw the assault vessels from the Lexington headed for the wreck, she decided the only way for she and her two companions to survive was to contact the people on that ship. So she headed into the wreck with one other. When Tully and Baker Company got into the wreck, they almost immediately got into a firefight with the Anj, who are a... Eckhart slave species. Jihan and Liant both went into the wreck also, leaving one behind in their ship, and they were observing the firefight. Then the last surviving Eckhart maiden pair joined the fight, and immediately the male was killed. He got his head blown off by one of the Jiao. They then shot off all six of the other Eckhart limbs and then used the laser to cauterize the wounds. The fighting over and the egg had secured. Tully and Baker Company noticed the Leix standing there. Jian went up to them and began speaking. She noticed that there was Jiao among them but she also figured that Tully was in charge and even though she was afraid of the Jiao, she asked for help for her people on the planet. And Kalm, who picked up a liking for human tall tales, immediately told the Leix that the Jiao were human slaves. Tully immediately called for Caitlin and Roth to come over. When Caitlin and Roth arrived, Caitlin was surprised to find Jihan referring to her as Queen of the Universe, another joke that Calm told. Roth told Caitlin that it was a good idea to continue with this until later because the Leix might be afraid of the Jiao. They took the three Leix back to the Lexington and they made preparations. Caitlin, Tully and Baker Company would head down on the planet with the Leix while Roth and the Lexington would head back to Earth to get help. They were hoping to be able to move all 100,000 Leix out of the nebula before the egg had returned, all that was left of the species. Part 6 is called Veleron. Three assault ships loaded with Baker Company with Caitlin, Tully and the three Leix all landed on Veleron. 
Baker Company now includes the current survivors plus some Jiao from the Earth Taif. The first thing Jian does when she lands is go to see Guizhou, who is the eldest. The Lix are silver skinned and very tall. They are in the shape of a pyramid with thick strong legs on the bottom and tapered up towards the top. They have eight fingers and around their face is what look like petals of a flower and those petals tend to brighten or dim, stiffen or relax depending on the mood and the emotion of the leek. They are a very tall species and they get taller and thicker as they get older. Jihan is young. She's only 21 years old, although she's much taller than any human or Jiao. But Guizhu, he's the oldest, is twice her length and much bigger than she is. Jihan comes back to the ship and takes Caitlin and Tully and a few soldiers to her house, the Jiao Law House. There they meet Guizhu, who questions Caitlin, and he doesn't understand why humans would want to help the Lix. The next morning, Jihan takes Caitlin, Tully, and Milu up to the Han, which is in the Hall of Decision, where Guizhu, as the eldest, questioned Caitlin in front of the elders of the Elian. Caitlin answers the best she could, but she still did not reveal that the Zhao are not slaves of the humans as Jian and the Lix tend to believe. She offers to help the Lix escape once enough ships come back from Earth. Guizhu then dismisses Caitlin and says that the Han will discuss things and come to a decision. Jihan got Caitlin and Baker Company two large empty alien houses that they could stay in until the Lexington returns. She explains to Tully and Caitlin about the unassigned and how they live. Then she explained to Caitlin that she broke Shensho and that is the right way to behave by going to the elders and telling them that the Jaw was alive and that is a shame that will live with her forever. Caitlin finally tells Jihan the truth that the Zhao are not human slaves. After Caitlin explains it to her, she understands, but she is still distressed. Jihan also told Caitlin that when the Lix leave a world, they only take those that belong to an alien. They leave all of the unassigned behind. And since the unassigned always outnumber those that are in the alien, then the Lix always leave most of their population behind to die. Jihan met with the Han at the Hall of Decision and she got them to agree to leave with the humans when the Lexington returned. She did not reveal what Caitlin told her about the Jiao and the humans because if she told them, she knew that they would refuse to go. When Jihan told Caitlin and Tully that most of the Lix were going to be left behind because they were unassigned, both Caitlin and Tully took it badly, but Tully took it especially bad. It turns out that the Lix learned to speak languages very quickly. In a couple of days, they were already speaking Jiao and English. When Tully left the meeting with Caitlin and Jihan, four Lix came up to him and they wanted to know what he meant about every individual should have a chance to prove their worth. Tully began telling them and after that, he spent all of his time with the unassigned, talking to them. Something I forgot to mention is that the Jiao have a time sense. It allows them to know when something big is gonna happen or how much time is left for them to do certain things. So they don't use clocks. But they have been on Veleron for about three weeks when their time sense kicked in. They didn't know what was coming through the frame point, but it was either their people or the egg hut. Part 7 is called The Return. Precept of Rance has returned with a massive fleet that includes the Lexington. And with him is General Kralik, Roth, Ale, 
when Caitlin and Tully go up to see him, they bring with them four Li'ik who are part of the unassigned that Tully has been talking to. Once tell the four Li'ik the truth about the Jiao and the humans, but the Li'ik don't care so long as there's work for them when they get to Earth. Jihan and Hadata went up in the space waters single spacecraft to watch as the ships came out of the frame point. Once she realized they were not the Eckhart, she tried to contact Tully and Tully told her that they were going to take them to safety to Earth. She asked Tully if they would tell them the truth after they got to Earth. Tully told her no, they will tell them the truth now before they leave. Jihan is worried because she thinks that when the hand find out, they will change their minds and not leave. And that means that they will die. Caitlin and Tully and the four Lixes went down to the planet. And Caitlin went with the four Lixes. And she convinced them that they should organize themselves into an, an Elan that would be called the Work Organizers Elan. Caitlin told once her idea and he decided to let her try out her idea because if she failed, he can always use the troops to force the Lix to come to Earth, saving them whether they want to be saved or not. Caitlin and Jian, Tully and Tu Zhao went to the Han to speak to the elders. There, Caitlin told him the truth and as Jihan feared, the Han changed their minds and refused to go with the humans. One of the unassigned that came with Tully stood and asked the Han what will happen to the Doshaya. The Doshaya is like the slum where the unassigned live. Guichu explained that even the alien will only be able to choose one person from each alien to escape and that the rest along with the Doshaya would have to stay behind and face their death. To which Tully replied that that is unacceptable and that was immediately translated for the hand. Lim of the unassigned then spoke before the elders. She was angry and bitter and she told them that the unassigned are leaving and going to earth with the humans and the Jiao and it doesn't matter what the elders say. They are the children of the Lix, yet they are treated like nothing. And so she says when they leave and go to earth, they won't miss the elders. With those words, she left the hall of decision. After that, most of the other aliens decided to go. Eleven decided to remain. The holdouts were given the few Lix ships that remained and they took off to search for a colony world that they can hide on. And the majority of the Lix went to Earth. Part 8 is called Terra. The Lexington was the last ship left in the system. On it had Jihan and the last of the Lix. And as they were about to jump, 13 Eckhart ships came through the frame point and they jumped just escaping them. After they had jumped through the frame point and were on their way back to Earth, Preceptor Rans called a meeting. And at that meeting, General Kralik, Ail, Roth, Caitlin, and Tully were all there. And he proposed a military expedition to go further up the galactic arm to search for more species that are technologically advanced as humans or Jiao. It was to be a diplomatic mission and Caitlin would be in charge of it. General Kralik was going to be in charge of the military base wherever that was built. And they were going to give two ships of the Lexington class to the Quant Koshan. One of the ships would have to come on a mission with them, but the other, the Quant Koshan, could do whatever they want with. Malu and Kal were quite sure that their Koshan would accept. The Lix was resettled in Colorado and the Terra Taif was building them a Lexington class ship. Terra Captain Danep was put in charge of the fleet and naval operations for the expedition. Tully was made a colonel 
and his second in command, Lieutenant Miller, was made a captain and put in charge of a special unit that reported directly to Caitlin, kind of like her personal service. And that is how the book ends. This is an excellent book. It gives you an in-depth look at the different alien species, the Eckhart, the Jow, and the Leix. And I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And I will be doing the third and final book sometime in the future. And I want to thank you for watching and listening. See you in the next video.